plugged in and turned on in paradise. It's all about hidden musical gems. Singers, songwriters, and players you might not know, but are among the best musicians in the world, standing on stage right next to your favorite superstars. In each episode, our host, Haley Loren, introduces you to these new faces and their own freshly minted music. Recorded in the Northern California foothill town of Paradise, historically known for lumber mills and gold mining, it's now rich with music, attracting some of the best musicians in the world. Plugged in and turned on in Paradise is a celebration of these undiscovered artists who are sure to become some of your new favorites. Internationally acclaimed singer-songwriter Haley Loren is our talented host. Her latest album hit the Japan Jazz Charts at number one. Now here's Haley with another musical episode of Plugged In and Turned On in Paradise. When a certain Beatle asked Denny Lane if he knew any good guitar players, his answer was yes, Lawrence Juber. Hey. It's Lawrence Juber here. Lawrence Juber spent years with Paul McCartney as his lead guitarist. Lawrence Juber is a two-time Grammy-winning guitarist who initially made a name for himself as the lead guitar player for Sir Paul McCartney's group Wings after spending many years as part of Great Britain's studio scene. known as LJ to his friends, is a master of the acoustic guitar and was recently voted Guitarist of the Year by Fingerstyle Guitar Magazine. Martin and Company Retro, LJ's Choice. I'm a retro kind of a guy. I said to him one day, do you know any good guitar players? And then he said, yeah, I do. And so I got the call. I didn't really know any Wings tunes, so I borrowed some LPs from my brother. I you know, just went in and, and winged him. <laughs> I walk into the audition and we're playing Chuck Berry tunes and you know, reggae grooves and it's, it didn't feel like a pop group, it felt like a rock band. And when we started on the Back to the Egg album, you know, the stuff that we were doing to begin with was very rock. Since that career-making tour with Paul McCartney and Wings, LJ has recorded hundreds of tracks for the music industry's biggest talents as well as 23 solo albums. So let's get to know the artist Acoustic Guitar Magazine calls one of the top players of all time, Lawrence Juber. Okay, are we ready?
like to have been a fly on the wall when Paul walked into Abbey Road with Eric Clapton in tow. Said, uh, I just brought my, my mate along to play on this track, lads, you know. Because that guitar solo is Eric Clapton on the, on the record. This is Fingerboard Road. As an example with Paul and Linda McCartney, was how much they functioned as a couple. And that work and family were all kind of intertwined, but they did it in a way that it worked, you know, because show business can be really brutal on a marriage. But, you know, it was a family. So, I mean, they had the kids. So there was no, you know, you didn't have like a tour bus full of groupies. You know, as soon as Paul and Linda and the kids got on the, on the bus, you know, the video changed to something quite different. For me, I mean, the experience, more than anything else, was just an amazing education. I, I describe it as, you know, I got my bachelor's degree from London University, my master's from the Cardinal University. I learned how to write songs, how to make records, how to just be an artist. So last time we saw Sir Paul, we showed him a picture of Rigby and said, you know, this is our granddaughter Rigby. And he looked at her and said, that's her first name? <laughs> and he, you know, he was kind of baffled by this. And then um, Nancy, you know, his, his wife, said, Oh, Paul, let's have a little girl and call her Rigby. She thought it was the cutest name. She said, let's, let's have a, a, a daughter and name her Rigby. Uh, and then they looked at each other. Maybe. Nah, nah.
My story of meeting Lawrence starting when I was seven, and because <laughs> that's when the Beatles exploded on America. When I graduated college and I started writing scripts, um, I was still a Beatle fan, but that's when John was killed. And like the whole world went into a depression in the morning. I wasn't coming out of it very well. I go downstairs and I was walking around the block and I, I wasn't looking where I was going at all. I had my head down and I ended up going, bam, straight into somebody. And I was like standing on a pair of boots and I look up and I'm standing on Ringo Starr in the middle of Beverly Hills. I was like stunned. And I also said, I'm, I'm just really sorry about John. And I turned to leave and he said, hold on a minute, can I, can I talk to you? So he started telling me about his relationship with John and what John's uh, death meant to him and how he was getting through it and how he was working on this new album. So actually at the club that we met at Catch a Rising Star uh, is, uh, was a comedy club and I used to hang out there and kind of jam in between comedy sets with some of the house musicians. And I walked into the club and I heard that Paul McCartney's guitar player was there that night. And Lawrence was in the middle and we said hello. And uh, <laughs> it was one of those kind of movie magic moments where everything got all... The entire universe shifted. Yeah. And the album that Ringo was talking about? It was the one I was working on with Paul. Right. Yeah. So it was kind of all meant to be. Thank you.
enjoyed this show. Please give us your comments at paradisemusichour.com. We'll be presenting another great artist next week on this public television station.